So moving on now to a topic that I, full disclosure, complete transparency, anyone who knows me knows that I went to Penn State. I'm a huge Penn State fan. Bleed blue and white. I love that there. I missed my time there. I graduated in May. But I have to talk about Penn State basketball. I have to. I I have to. And like I said, I want I want people to know. Yes, I have a bias, but I am going to lay out some facts for you that are incredible. Penn State basketball is ranked 13th in the country. 13th. What the hell is going on? I can't be- I still can't believe it. As a guy who has covered the team as a guy who's went to a lot of games. I am so happy for this team because they've kind of been, it's been, you know, one step forward, two steps back for a very, very, very long time. Now they're finally having that breakthrough season that a lot of people, Penn Staters specifically, saw coming. So 13th in the nation this is the highest ranking since the 1995-96 season when they were ranked number 9. They jumped all the way up from 22 to 13, which is the largest jump that we've seen from a college basketball team this season. Nine spots. Very, very impressive. They played in front of a sold-out crowd in an 83-77 victory over Minnesota at the Bryce Jordan Center. Lamar Stevens posted a career-high 33 points, 17 of which came in the first half. They're 18-5 this season, 12-1 at home at the Bryce Jordan Center. Very impressive. The six-game winning streak that they have right now started on January 18th with a win over then-ranked Ohio State, who was, went in a downward spiral. A, that's an understatement. A downward spiral of a season for Ohio State. I can't believe what's going on. Penn State actually is, they're going in opposite directions. Penn State is shooting up directly. Ohio State is shooting directly down. In this win streak, wins included. Wins at Michigan Michigan and Michigan State. It's not an easy thing to go on the road, in the Big Ten, especially against two very talented teams in Michigan and Michigan State, and win on the road. I don't care what team Tom Izzo has. It is never easy to go in and win at Michigan State. They now sit at second place in the Big Ten behind only Maryland, who they also beat earlier this season and sit atop the Big Ten with a 9-3 conference record. This team is dangerous. I I really think this team could make a push come March. Based off my experience, my little experience I have in watching watching March Madness, come March, the teams that are the most successful are the teams that have the most experience and underclassmen. Here's a perfect example for you. Mercer beat Duke in 2014. Mercer had seven seniors on the team. The majority of them were the consistent contributors. Were there some that didn't contribute as much? Yes, of course there were. But seven seniors on the team that have worked together, that have played together, that have literally lived together. Anyone who's ever played a college sport, a high school sport, knows that your team, you essentially live together. You're going through your life together. You see each other every day. And you could say that doesn't really play a factor into it, but I definitely think it does. Seven seniors for Mercer in 2014 when they beat Duke and upset them in the first round. Duke, on the other hand, fun fact for you, had two seniors on the team. Only one of which really contributed at all, and that was Quinn Cook, a fantastic player. The other one was Sean Kelly, who played one minute and change for the entire season. So, essentially, no disrespect to Sean Kelly. Essentially, if he wasn't on the team, not much not much changes. So, really only one senior on that team. You had Justice Winslow, Jalil Okafor, a lot of other talented players on that team, but they were all they were all younger. Tyus Jones, I believe as well. A great class of freshmen, all of which declared for the NFL draft uh, the <laughs> We're still on NFL mode. All of which declared for the NBA draft the next year. Are there exceptions to this rule? Yes. 
Obviously, we've seen Kentucky come in and win on a consistent level with predominantly underclassmen. They have some seniors mixed in. They have some juniors mixed in. But Calipari, the way he shapes his program, is it's just a stepping stone to get to the NBA. So you're going to see a lot of freshmen there. They come in for one, maybe two years, and, and then they declare for the NBA draft. But this Penn State team, why I bring this up, has everything a typical blueprint successful team in March Madness needs to have. I think that overall, they have a lot of great pieces. Not a ton of seniors on the team, but you have Lamar Stevens, an overlooked star. This guy is going to be very, very good for years to come. And anyone who knows him, who has covered him, knows that he's a fantastic guy, too. You can't not like him. He works hard, both on and off the court. He's a class act. He has the physical attributes that a player needs to be successful in the NBA, but that's a whole other conversation. Mike Watkins as well, another senior on this team. Big, six foot nine center, right under the basket. And then you combine a lot of other players on this team. Myron Jones, Miles Dredd, uh, John Hara. A very good mix of experienced, talented upperclassmen, seniors specifically, combined, like I said, with a good duo, a good core of underclassmen as well. We saw Penn State win the NIT championship few years ago, and they're slowly building up. Last year wasn't too reassuring, but this year it's a different story. They're finally having that breakthrough, breakthrough year, and for the first time since I've started following Penn State basketball, I saw the type of dedication that the school throws into football, students specifically. I saw that with basketball. There were students lined up before the game, like blocks, maybe not blocks, but there were hundreds, thousands of students lined up outside the Bryce Jordan Center before that game started to get in there. And anyone who goes to Penn State know that, knows that that does not happen. So that, to me, shows that something special is going on right now. Not to mention Pat Chambers, a guy who I have a lot of respect for. Has he been on the hot seat before? Reports say no, but anyone who knows the ebbs and flows of this team, of this program, knows that there have been some people that haven't been happy with Pat Chambers at the helm. They're sticking around with him, and I think he's the right guy to have there. He's developing this program into something very special. They are right on the brink of being a top 10 team in the nation, and I couldn't be happier for him. Patience is a virtue, and patience pays off, and it's paying off right now for Penn State basketball. Very interesting storylines for this team. I'm going to be following them as I have all year. But I think college basketball this year is wide open. Wide open. And that creates for a very, very, very entertaining time come March. I can't wait for March Madness. We're finally getting into the heat now of conference play. And it's 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 going to be very, very, very fun to watch. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited.